Hey guys, welcome back to this old Hewlett Packard 8664A. I purchased, took a gamble on it. Um, it basically works. It works well enough for my purposes, but there are some low-level internal codes. So I've been going through the test procedures as outlined using the onboard computer and some test jacks. Uh, where we last left off, I couldn't continue because I needed to purchase another jack to uh, proceed. So, started out with three error codes, which led us to three other error codes, all in the minus 31 um, code uh, family. And they all lead to test 4A, all of which require a separate cable. So, got one here. So I'm right now doing a test on the output down converter. I need to disconnect J1 and install my jumper cable. Now the deal is, if I run test 4A and I get a positive result, whatever module it indicates, uh, you just replace it. There is no component level repairing in, in these things. There is no schematic. Uh, <laughs> there's one person selling these modules. They are, I believe, in Israel, and they're not cheap. I think they're like 250 a pop plus 100 shipping, whatever that, or whatever that comes out to. Uh, that's a good chunk of change. I would not be interested in making that kind of investment right now. I could be more inclined if I'm dropping that money. I'll just buy another, I'll buy another one of these. <laughs> Take a gamble that the parts I need might be good in that one. So really, the only issue I'm seeing what's is, is, okay using the equipment I have. I can't check phase noise accurately with the equipment I have, but what I can check is uh, what I have noticed is that the output level varies. Quite a bit, about 10%, as I just slowly vary the frequency. That's that's not so great, but uh, it's not bad enough I couldn't live with it, uh, given how expensive it might be to, to repair this. All right, fine, jeez. Okay, so we just leave that aside. Don't let it short into anything. And this goes in there. over to this. So it has a built-in voltmeter and power meter and there are jacks going to the back so if you wanted to you could make a, a power meter out of this. I mean it's a small small fraction of what it can really do but uh, it is just one of the many extras you get with this. Okay, finally, special, three, two, one, one, one. awesome, <laughs> negative code, which I guess is good in a way, because it means uh, we haven't hit a dead end yet, but it also means i got to look up another test, and I'm going to find another code, and Uh, kind of wondering or waiting for us for this to lead up to one of the other error codes I already have, meaning they're all converging to the same issue. All right, I got to look up what a negative 31, 256, 311 error is. <laughs> this is really tedious. Okay, that error code leads right back to the same module now with J3 test 2A, which means. You remove that jumper cable, hook that one back up, remove this one, and run this cable over to the power meter. We don't need that external cable anymore. Ah, uh, I have plenty of length there.
Okay, special. Three, two, one. Um, minus 31, 456. Damn. <laughs> it's yet another unique code. Hey. Okay, this time HF driver J5 to the power input test 4A. Here we go. Special. 3, 2, 1. On. Positive. Okay, it's the first time we have ever gotten a positive code. I will look this up. This should tell me what is bad. Well, that was an interesting evening's work. I was able to complete one of the tests, the first one, to its logical conclusion with an error plus 10,302 HF driver, which means replace the HF driver module. Another test got a little confusing towards the end because they were referring to jacks that didn't quite match up. Uh, in reality what they were saying in the manual, but I think they were saying the gallium arsenide dividers are bad, error plus 2 comma 602, which I think is this final module. The other test, the third test, I don't know the right um, adapter to complete right now. So I'm going to stop for now um, and share my thoughts. I could go out and get some expensive replacement modules that may or may not fix the problem. Even just getting one of those modules would cost more than I, the entire purchase and shipping price uh, of this unit. And it may not fix my problem, so I'm not inclined to do that. This works well enough for my purposes right now. Uh, I'm not going to pull out these modules and try to f com fix a component that might be bad because I would be working blind and I don't want to break it. Uh, but one thing that was curious is they say if, if, uh, if I were to replace the HF driver module, there is a, I think it's a three-step calibration procedure I'm supposed to run on it. More special test modes. Now that is the module that has a handwritten number on it that I'd mentioned earlier, I think, that I thought might have been from an earlier repair attempt or calibration procedure or something like that. Turns out that's from the factory. When you run through an internal test, you're supposed to look at a reading on the display here and adjust the trimmer until you get the value handwritten on that module, which is uh, 1.708. So I'm curious, should I leave the module in there and run through the calibration procedure? This thing hasn't been calibrated in a couple decades, and it got the shit kicked out of it in, <laughs> in transit, um, maybe I should just do it. I'm, my only concern is that I make things worse. Uh, I need to tip it on its side. There's a trimmer on the bottom and one or two on the top. And uh, this supplies its own internal signals. You don't have to hook up an external voltmeter or signal source or voltage source. It can do its own thing. You just need to adjust some trimmers so that it display matches what it's supposed to. So that's a possibility. My other thought is, what do you do when you have three error codes? Uh, it seems to me it's entirely possible one module being bad could cause errors in the other modules. In which case, which one takes precedence? <laughs> which module do you replace first? Maybe the HF driver module isn't a bad one. Maybe it's the ALC module or one of the others. Um, I'm not going to okay, I'm not going to buy three replacement modules. Um, so where does that leave me? <laughs> uh, so that's where I, well, where it's going to leave me is I'm going to leave off here. Um, I'm going to focus on getting the 8662 fully operational. I got the manual for it, hard copy, and because uh, that I have schematics, I can do component level repairs. There are a lot more of them out there. I can get a junker one if I need to to get spare parts. I already bought one replacement module already. Um, it's smaller. It does everything I need to do. Uh, I will certainly hang on to this. It's, a, it's a basically the replacement for the 8662. 
uh, and it works well enough for my purposes. It's just a little bit too big and awkward. But I want to thank one of my uh, viewers for giving me a suggestion of putting this on a cart list, like a scope cart, with a bit of an angle so that it can roll under the workbench. Uh, fine idea, fine idea, because I wouldn't be using this every day anyways, and I don't want to take up all real estate. Uh, so that's what I want to focus on. Um, if any of you have more experience, well, I don't have any experience in the 8664, but I'd be curious if any of you do, if you have any thoughts on what do you do when you have three error codes or three bad modules indicated, and any potential harm in running through uh, that, that test for the... Um, I'll, I'll put in the, the description, I can't remember the exact uh, test to run, um, if that could potentially get things so out of whack it wouldn't work as well as it currently does. Uh, so that's going to be it for now. Thanks for watching. And if any of you have ever thought about getting one of these, uh, now you have some idea what you're in for. Oh, one final thing. Replacing the battery did the trick. So now when I turn it on after a brief uh, reset, display, checkout procedure, just starts working. No more 10 minute calibration procedure, so replacing that NICAD battery did the trick.